Hello and welcome to the next video in the Esperanto 101 series, Basic Verbs. Verbs are the heart of most sentences and so they are very, very important. So this video is a big one. Now the infinitive form of a verb, which is sort of the unconjugated basic form of the verb, in Esperanto it ends in I. You would know infinitives in English, they're those phrases that start with the word to. So, to sleep, to dream, to go, to walk, and so on. In French, you have infinitives, instead of having the word to in front of them, the verb ends in er or re or ir. And similarly, in Spanish, you have ar, er, and ir verbs. Those, of course, all come from Latin having infinitives that ended in are, like amare, to love, and monere, to advise, and so forth. In Esperanto, they all end in I. So to be is esti, to go is iri, to like is shati, to see is vidi, to stop is halti, and so on. Now, the present tense of a verb in Esperanto always ends in the suffix as. This is the easiest to be you'll ever see. If you ever struggled in French trying to remember how to conjugate être, or in Spanish trying to conjugate uh, ser, or estar, or in um, German trying to conjugate sein, Esperanto is quite simple. It's estas. Every form is estas. Mi estas, vi estas, ni estas, and so on. All of them are that simple. Similarly for other verbs. You go is vi iras, we like is ni shatas, and so on. Now one side effect of this that won't trouble an English or a French speaker or a German speaker is you cannot drop the pronouns like you can in some other languages. In Spanish and Russian and Latin, since the verb carries an ending that matches the subject, you can just drop the pronoun. You know, you don't have to say yo or ego in Spanish or Latin because the verb has an ending that tells you that it's I. But in English and French and German, even though French and German conjugate their verbs a lot, we're used to saying the pronoun. So you just have to make sure you keep the pronoun if you speak a language that would normally drop it. The past tense of a verb is very simple. It ends in is instead of as. Vi iris, you went. Ni shatis, we liked. And so on. And yes, estis is the past tense of to be. It's very simple. You don't have to worry about this form is were and this form is was. It's always estis. The future tense of a verb ends in os. Vi iros, ni shatos, li vidos, ili haltos, mi dormos. Let's talk for a moment about conditional verbs. And we're going to introduce the Esperanto word for if here. In English, I could say, you go somewhere. But then I could say, if you go, but there's a difference if I say, if you go versus if you went. If I say, if you go to the store, it means, well, you might go. It's still possible. If I say, you know, if you went to the store, you could have bought this. I've put the verb in sort of the past tense, but I'm really using it to contradict reality. It's a conditional thing. In linguistics, we call this the subjunctive form of the verb. You know, well, if you'd have listened to me, you'd have been fine. Whereas you'd say, if you listen to me, if it's still possible, if the thing hasn't happened yet and could still come to pass. Similarly, we like to go for a walk. If we like this guy, we'll hire him. If we liked her, we would have asked her out, right? So 
In English, you use a form that looks a lot like the past tense to mark a verb as, no, this kind of isn't really what happened. It's subjunctive. It's describing, you know, a hypothetical situation. Now, you could use the subjunctive for something that is still possible, but you're making it more remote. You know, you know if you went to the store, you could pick up some groceries for me. You know, that's, that's saying it's still possible for you to go to the store, but I kind of get the feeling you're not going to, but maybe I could get you to do it. Esperanto has a conditional form as well. It ends in U.S. So let me show you a pair of sentences where I use the regular forms and where I use the conditional forms, and you can see the difference. Let's see, the Esperanto word for if is se, S-E. Se vi iros, vi vidos. This means if you go, you'll see. Now, in English, I wouldn't use the word will. I would say if you go. But I really mean if you go in the future from now. You know, if you go later today or something. So, in Esperanto, I should really use os to mark this as future. So, se vi, se vi iros, vi vidos. If you go to the county fair, you'll see the guy with the giant dog or whatever it is. Se vi iros, vi vidos. I'm using the future tense because it could still happen in the future. Both the dependent clause, the if, and the independent one. You will see. Whereas if I want to make this a little bit more conditional, a little bit less certain, less real, or maybe it contradicts reality entirely, I would use the conditional. Se vi iros, vi vidos. If you went to the fair, which I know you're not going to, you would see the guy, but you won't since you're not going. So that's the difference between the conditional form and the normal tense forms. Modal verbs. These are verbs that sort of modify other verbs as to whether they're going to happen or not, or when they have to happen. The most common ones you'd run into in English would be, I have to do something, or I can do something. And the infinitives for those in Esperanto are devi and povi. So if I say, me devas, it means I must. If I say, me povas, it means I can. You use these with the infinitives of other verbs. So if I want to say, I must go somewhere, I say, me devas iri. If I say, I can go somewhere, it's me povas iri. Now, devas and povas can be put into the conditional form or the subjunctive form, like any other verb, and that softens them a bit. Me devus iri. No, I should go. Maybe I won't, but I should. Me devus. I could go, but I don't have to. Me povus iri. Another verb that you might see used as a modal verb is shatas which is liking. Now you can like a thing, like I like dogs, but you can also like to do a thing. So, me shatas iri, I like to go. And if you put it into conditional, it's me shatus iri, I would like to go, but I can't go today. Then there's the imperative form, which is the form you use when you're giving a command. The imperative form just ends in a U. It doesn't have an S at all. If I say to someone, Iru, it means go. Haltu, stop. Lernu, learn. That's why lernu.net, the website for learning Esperanto, is named that. It means learn. Dormu, go to sleep. Now you can use pronouns with the imperative form in Esperanto, and it doesn't quite work the way it does in English makes it easier to sort of give commands indirectly to someone else. If I say li iru, that's a third person pronoun, that's he. So I'm saying he needs to go. So I'm giving a command to somebody else about whoever he is. So, you know, if, you know, you see a scene in some movie and, you know, the king is looking at his guards who have grabbed the hero, you know, you can say, let him go. Li iru. Or on the other hand, you know, the heroine might be running away with something and the villain says, She halt too. Stop her. 
you know, she needs to stop. But you're not asking her to stop, you're asking somebody else to do it, so it's a command. If you were just asking her to do it, it would just say halt to. If you use the we form with ni, it's like saying let's do something in English. Ni lernu, let's learn. Ili dormu, this is something you might say to your spouse about the kids. Put them to bed. They need to sleep. So that's the basics of the past, present, and future forms of verbs, how to make them conditional and use them with the word if, and how to give somebody a command. The next video is going to be very, very tricky indeed. We're going to start talking about the accusative case, which is probably one of the hardest bits of Esperanto for an English speaker to get the hang of. But don't be afraid. I'll break it down as simply as I can. Thanks again for watching.